got. All right, let's do. I know I'm a minute early, but let's do a test. Um, let's see if I can rearrange the microphone. Um, let's try that out. So we'll do a yay, Tachi. Good morning, Olivia. I hope you're doing well. Awesome. Good morning, Morgan. I hope you're doing well. Uh, I feel like I'm in a, a hostage situation over here in this little office room. Uh, I think I might be the first person that's been in this office room since the hotel opened. It's... Uh, kind of funky. All right, we'll give a few minutes uh, for everybody to check in. Um, does anybody have any questions about anything before I go into um, reviewing the lab, going over the lab? Um, I wasn't able to plug into an ethernet here, so I'm using my phones. Wi-Fi. So hope, I'm going to try to talk slow. Hopefully, uh, there's no buffering issue um, in the in the transfer. So, anybody have any questions before we get going? Let's see. Okay. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check to see if so the camera's viewing me you're streaming to the camera i want to make sure that when i flip my phone around to show a picture that what i'm looking at isn't a mirror image of what you guys see so we're just going to confirm that together because in other words if i don't want to see somebody on their left and it flips it and you're seeing someone on their right arm you know so can you guys read this as it is? Let's see if I can. Can you read it as external oblique? Just somebody can confirm. So that way, if I'm reading external oblique and you guys are reading external oblique, then we see the same thing. And awesome. Thank you guys for confirming that. So I need to just make sure that I'm doing these from your perspective and not the computer screen's perspective. First world problems. Okay. So today we're gonna do we're gonna do our lab where we're gonna work in agonist and then contractions and motion, right? Muscles influence motion through contraction. So one of the first ones we did was the, and all of this is on the Moodle doc, so you could pull it up as we talk about it. I had to um, screen, I had to take pictures because I can't pull it up on my laptop, but this is the one we're going to talk about, okay, first. So the cable, the machine is trying to twist her to her left, her trunk, it's trying to influence trunk motion only. So because the machine is trying to twist her to her left, we need muscles that are pulling to the right transversely. Those are going to be the right transverse trunk rotators, the muscles that pull in the direction that we need for this particular job. Who are the right transverse? You could have memorized them. You could see them, or you can look at your cross-sectional circle, left external, right internal, right erector spinae are going to be our major ones that I'm holding you accountable for in this class. So now that we have established agonist, because we see why we need the agonist, now we can work in how would those agonists influence motion. So right transverse pullers 
We're going to make right transverse rotation happen through concentric context, through concentric contraction, through concentric work. So in other words, when she starts here and makes it come to the middle, the cable's still trying to do this, but her muscles make her rotate to the right. That would be concentric contraction of the right transverse stroke rotator muscles. If she starts here and she allows the cable to go back the other way, that doesn't mean she's using left transverse pullers. It, in fact, you don't want those. You already have the cable trying to do that. If she used left transverse pullers, she, throw them. she still needs right pullers. But those right pullers are going to work eccentrically, allowing the motion to go in the opposite direction of their pull. Okay, That's what negative means. The agonist is our positive. That's what we turn on. And if there's motion in the opposite direction of the positive agonist pull, that's where you get the negative work, the negative contraction. Okay. Any questions about that one before we move on? Okay, let's do this one. So pull this one up, take a look at this one. Um, in class, we did um, the isometric at the top. So what we'll do for this lab is top to bottom, bottom to top. Okay. Now remember, in, in to start off with, agonist is going to be on throughout the entire exercise and you know, think of it like this knowing like if we were doing if you were doing some exercises wouldn't you want to know which muscles are working right or if someone asked you hey what muscles am i working you know you'd want to know you'd want to know which one so that's that's what this is about right this is about trying to teach you guys um to identify um which part of the circle lights up when you need them to work and that lit up part helps you to remember who are those specific muscles okay so we established on class that i need left lateral trunk benders at the trunk and i need right lateral at the cervical in other words i need the ones at the bottom for the trunk and the ones on the top at the neck okay ground and gravity the external forces Gravity is trying to pull down on my waist, my center of mass, uh, a little bit higher than that, but still it's gravity is trying to pull down on the middle. But you also have the ground pushing up on two ends of me, my rigid link. Gra gravity is pushing up in my elbow. Gravity is pushing up at my feet. So the analogy I gave in classes, it's like taking some silly putty or a sticky tack and stretching it your two hands are holding up two ends, and so gravity is going to try to sink at the bottom, right? So if he relaxed all of his muscles, he's going to fall to that bottom picture. And notice his trunk is bent. Let me see if I can get yeah, this lock. Look how his trunk is bent to his right on the bottom picture. Okay. So that tells me that the external forces, ground and gravity, are trying to bend, trying to lean his trunk to his right. Because if he relaxed, ground and gravity would bend his trunk to the right. Does that make sense? So that's why we need our left lateral trunk benders in this exercise. The stuff on the bottom, the ones on the bottom are the muscles on his left. So now that we have the agonist, who do we need to do a job? Who do we turn on above resting tone? That's going to be our positive. Agonists are always going to be our positive. So if we see motion in the direction of the positive muscles pull, it's concentric. If we see motion in the opposite direction of the agonist pull, that's eccentric. Eccentric is a term that means like uh, different. You know, think of, um, you know, someone might dress Eccentrally, eccentric. It's just different, right? So eccentric contraction is kind of different. You're not expecting motion to happen in the opposite direction 
of something pulling. Okay, but again, elevators do it all the time. Elevators let you go down while pulling up. Pulling up allows you to go down at a nice, slow, and controlled and safe speed. So it's ex eccentric. It's different. You expect anything that pulls up to make something go up. Think of it practically. If you were going to lay a baby in the crib, right? You would, you would, you're still pushing up on the baby to support the baby, but eccentrically, you're using contraction to lower the baby down. So something that's pushing and pulling up is responsible for motion. It's a little weird. It's what they call it eccentric. So we have to understand how that works. So contraction-wise, the same muscles for the same exercise. Top to bottom would be eccentric. The left lateral trunk benders allow right lateral trunk bending through eccentric contraction. Coming up would be concentric. Left lateral trunk benders would make left lateral trunk bending happen through concentric contraction. And at the top, it'd be isometric if you hold in that position at the top. Um, so it's all the same muscles. The changes in motion is because of the change in the contraction. In an exercise, majority of the time, we get to the exceptions later. That's when you're trying to go faster than what gravity can offer. Super rare. We don't do it often. That's why we spend more time on what we do in our activities of daily living and our activities of daily exercise. So your circles help you to remind you of who are the left lateral trunk benders. The circles don't tell you who's working or not. You have to figure that out. I need wrist flexors. I need wrist extensors. I need ulna deviators. I need radial deviators. So you, you're, you need to learn how to identify who you need on the circle. And once you light that up, then it helps you to remember who those muscles. So if we're looking for left lateral trunk benders or left lateral trunk bending muscles, it's everything on the left side of the belly button. Left rectus, left external, left internal, left direct. Okay, Olivia, let's see. Why is top to bottom not concentric? Okay, great question. So Olivia's question is, why is top to bottom not concentric? Okay, yes, let, let's look at his trunk because the, the pelvis is kind of just going up and down. There's not really significant pelvic girdle rotation there. So this is just a trunk conversation. Um, so, uh, Brian, sorry, guys. Okay. So this is just a trunk conversation. So gravity is trying to bend him to the right. Does that make sense, Olivia? Like gravity is trying to bend him just trunk to his right. So if gravity is trying to bend his trunk to his right, then the muscles that he needs to, to allow, like in other words, if he used his right lateral benders in the same direction as gravity, he would slam his pelvis into the ground. It's like... um. It's like doing a push-up and you pull your hands away from the ground. Like he doesn't need the muscles that are trying to bend him to the right because ground and gravity is already trying to bend him to the right. Does that make sense? So concentric would be to make himself come up. Gravity isn't trying to make his hips come up, right? Gravity is not trying to make him come up in this exercise. Gravity is only trying to bring him down. So he has to come up with concentric contraction and let himself down with eccentric. So that's why the left laterals are going to do left lateral from being bent on the bottom. Oh, I got to do it like this. From being bent, this phone, sorry, guys. From being bent here, I have to make left lateral happen because I'm already bent to my right here and I go back to anatomical. So I have to make left lateral trunk bending happen here through concentric, and then I'm going to allow right lateral through eccentric. Does that make sense? Oh, gosh. This, this place, bro, this is funny. 
this is this is quite an an experience in here. Uh, okay, you guys, let's keep going. The next one is this. Okay. So what muscles at her trunk would be holding that position? We're not going to give motion yet. We're going to hold that position. So obviously it's going to be isometric, but just ask yourself, what is grounding gravity trying to do, trying to bend, right? What is grounding gravity trying to do? If she relaxed all of her muscles and went down and kept her elbows on the floor, I bet she would be extended. I bet you she would be in an extended position if she if she came down and her elbow stayed. You know, it may not be as much extension or an extended position as her arms out, but grounding gravity is trying to extend her trunk. So that's why she needs the flexors. That's why she needs the flexion pullers. That's why she needs the, tum the tummy muscles, the ones in the front. The ones in the front are going to prevent the extension from happening, make the flexion happen, or allow the extension as she comes down. So um, if she started off, in other words, if she started off with her tummy flat on the floor, so if she started off in an extended position, her tummy's on the floor, her elbow's here, she has to make herself come up for that bridge, right, for that plank. So she's going to have to use her trunk flexors concentrically to hold that. And, and then once you're there, you're going to use them isometrically and then eccentrically to come down to allow the trunk extension. Okay. So we identify the agonist as the trunk flexion pullers or the trunk flexors at the trunk and your circles or your lists or just seeing all the muscles. Sometimes when you're trying to see the pictures of the muscles, though, you forget some because there's so many different pictures. That's why I like consigning it into um, the circles. But you say, OK, who are the tummy muscles? Who are the ones in the front? Right and left rectus, right, left external, right, left internal. Um, verbiage wise, you could say the rectus abdominis that would like infer a set. Um, you could say the external obliques. You could say the internal obliques that infers set. Um, but I think what we could start to see is that what we shouldn't say is verbiage like the obliques, because that's kind of tapping into core. Because, you know, as we establish, sometimes your right and left external are antagonist. And sometimes your right external, your left internal can be agonist. And so just saying obliques is just kind of a easy way of just kind of something's right but i don't really know which one it is so um so that's why we want to be specific we want to be specific okay we're good on that one at the neck you would need cervical extensors Right, gravity is trying to flex you. You would need cervical extensors. Those are your right and left erector spine. If from here she looks up, like you know, let's say she hears a noise, she looks up. Extensors do extension because that would be cervical extension looking up. Extensors do extension through concentric contraction. And if she lowers her head down, that's flexion. Extensors do flexion through eccentric contraction. Cool. All right. This one's a little subtle. This is what we call a, um, a pelvic tilt. It's a therapy exercise. Um, but I'm going to explain the main motion that's happening. So we should be able to, well, you, you see it in your material. So basically in the top picture, the person is extended, the trunk is extended and the pelvis is anteriorly tilted. That's why you have that space uh, in the low back. So we're going to go from there to a flat back, which means we had posterior pelvic girdle rotation 
which means our trunk went from being kind of extended to being flexed, right? So that's that's the key. And because of, uh, you know, tight muscles and posture, and so don't, don't look at it as what gravity is trying to do to that little bitty arc in the middle. It's, it's not as long as a plank. Um, think of it as you could lay down in that position at the top. You could lay down in that position at the top with your, your hips flexed and your arms over your head. Relaxed. Just relax. And in your back, right? So, so if you're laying there relaxed and nothing happens, no motion happens, then there's no external forces trying to make you do anything. That makes sense. It's almost like if I rested my arm on the table and I say, what's gravity trying to do to my arm? And it's like, well, in this position, nothing because my arm's resting on the table. My gravity can't try to make me go side to side. Okay. So from top to bottom in this example, really, okay. And those trunk flex the ones in the front, right? This externals and internals. Um, probably wouldn't ask this question unless I was sure everybody was on the same page of it, but I didn't want to put it in here because so many of you guys work in clinics and therapy clinics and, you know, we'll do these posterior tilt exercises uh, for lumbar stabilization and, um, okay, Kennedy, it's buffering. Sorry about that. I'll, uh, let me see if I can talk slower or try to reconnect my Wi-Fi. Let's see. Absolutely. I'll try to repeat that. Um, what I was saying is I'm trying to put my phone as close to the computer as I can. Um, okay, what about now? I tried to move the speaker. I tried to put my phone closer to the computer because I'm sniping off of my hotspot. Is that better? Testing one, two, three, testing. It's a lot better. Awesome. Thank you. So what I was going to say is I'm going to, you guys have the pictures already. So I'm just going to talk. I'm talking about the pelvic tilt. The reason I gave that question on this practice is because so many students in athletic training and clinicals, um, therapy place do these pelvic tilt exercises for lumbar stabilization, for pelvic floor uh, strengthening. And the concept of it is that if you create posterior pelvic girdle rotation through your trunk flexors, um, and remember your transverse abdominus is more of a, of a stabilizing, like a, a big abdominal sphincter muscle. So you're squeezing all that stuff in. And so you would be innervating all those trunk flexors and and that transverse that's trying to create pressure. And remember that starts and ends on the vertebra of the, you know, so that would help stabilize those things. So I just kind of wanted to show you how the pelvic tilt exercise kind of works that um, when you're laying there, you naturally have that extension in your trunk. Gravity is no longer trying to make you do anything because you're just laying there relaxed with your hips flexed and, you, and your knees flexed and then you have to make that posterior pelvic girdle rotation happen with your trunk flexors. You have to make trunk flexion happen. So that's why you activate um, those core muscles. Who are those? The rectus, externals, internals. Okay, good. Thank you guys for the feedback. Y'all know I'm doing the best I can. Uh, let's see. Moving on. Oh, one of my favorites. Okay, guys, this is the windshield wiper exercise example. Okay. All right. So look at that one. And what I'll do, I can just try to talk to you. Um, so let's first, 
in the reminder about pelvic girdle rotation when your feet are off the ground and trunk motion. Okay. So your trunk muscles um, are influencing pelvic girdle rotation because motion of the pelvic girdle about, about your sternum is trunk motion. So like if I can rotate my trunk to the left by literally moving my sternum about my pelvis, like the pubis, or I can rotate my trunk to the left by rotating my pelvis to the right. Cap and bottle concept, right? Um, opening this bottle of water, I could spin the cap to the left, left transverse, or I could spin the bottle to the right. It gets me the same motion between these two bones, these two rigid links. The motion is really opening and closing. I'm either opening the bottle or closing the bottle. But I can do so by spinning the cap to the left or the bottle to the right. Same exact concept with the trunk and the pelvis. Right transverse trunk is either literally spinning the sternum to look at the right hip or keeping the sternum still and spinning the pelvis to make the right hip look at the sternum. Okay. So let's first let's first go motion, just because this might be new or for a while. So just the motion, top to bottom, we had right trans, not top to bottom, um, <clears throat> top to middle. Okay. We had right transverse pelvic girdle rotation. So that tells me I had to have left transverse trunk rotation. Okay. Middle to bottom, left transverse pelvic girdle rotation. So that tells me I had to have right transverse trunk rotation. Cool. I want to make sure we understand that before we get into the muscles. Okay. All right. Let's take a look isometrically before we get into contractions in motion. Isometrically, look at the one in the middle. Imagine you're doing that one and you're holding that position <clears throat> in the middle. Sorry, I was holding that, holding that position in the middle. Would you be able to figure out, I'm hoping you can, eventually I know you can. Can you figure out which specific muscles you're doing this exercise and a friend says, hey, what muscles am I working in this exercise? And maybe before this class, you just said core. I don't know, maybe you'd say obliques. Like you see how that's kind of generalized. Like for us, we need to be able to say which external, which internal, right? Which rector. We need to be able to be specific, okay? So give that a shot. See if you can, and I'll, I'll show you how I do it, and maybe that works for you. But the question is, in the position in the middle, can you identify which specific obliques, we'll just play the oblique game for now, which specific obliques would be an agonist to maintain that windshield wiper position? Feet are on the right side. Transverse plane for the pelvis. So in other words, gravity is trying, because his legs are on the right side, gravity, like a teeter-totter, is trying to do that same motion. Gravity is trying to rotate his pelvis to the right because his legs are tilted over to the right. Okay? If his legs were tilted over to the left, gravity would be trying to twist his pelvis to the left. So gravity is trying to right transverse pelvic girdle rotate him, which means gravity is also trying to left transverse trunk rotate him. Gravity is trying to twist his trunk to the left. How do I know? I know that because his sternum, which is fixed, if he relaxes all of his muscles and his legs plop over to the right, his sternum is going to be looking at his left hip. Think about it. If you were doing that stretch and you rotated your legs over to your right, your sternum is looking at your left hip. 
And the only way that can happen is for your trunk to twist to the left. Does that make sense? So I know that if gravity is trying to twist my trunk to my left and I'm preventing that from happening, I need muscles that are trying to twist me to the right. I would need right transverse trunk rotator to hold that position isometrically to prevent gravity from twisting my trunk to the left. Does that make sense? And once I identify who I need, my circles help to remind me who they are. So if gravity is trying to twist my trunk to the left and I'm preventing that, I need muscles that are trying to twist my trunk to the right. We have a name for those muscles, right transverse trunk rotators. Who are those muscles? I see my circle, PE time, left external, right internal, right erector. I'll give you a minute to see if we get some thumbs ups or some thumbs downs or some. I'll also guys this weekend some past videos if you want to start looking ahead to the ankle and the knee and that stuff that's coming next week. Okay, are y'all ready for contraction and motion? How the agonists are gonna influence motion through contraction. We're good to move on to that. Okay. Let's do Okay, let's do middle to top. I'm, I'm trying to work these easier. I'm trying to work them into an easy progression. Middle to top, middle to top, all right? Gravity is trying to drop my legs down and I know I bring them up. So that's a hint at concentric contraction, but let's do it the old way. Let's do it the way I've been, no shortcuts. Gravity in the middle is trying to twist my trunk to the left. We've established that. I need muscles that are trying to twist my trunk to the right to go against it. I need right transverse trunk rotators. Okay. Now, what motion do I observe from middle to top? Motion at trunk. The motion at the trunk would be right transverse trunk rotation. Think of it. My sternum is looking more at my left hip in the middle and now my sternum is lined up with my pubis top so the only way that can happen is if I go from being twisted more to my left so I have to have right transverse trunk rotation I have to have twisting to the right so if my right transverse trunk rotators are working they're doing a job and I see motion in that direction concentric muscle contraction so the right transverse trunk rotators would be working concentrically to cause that specific movement from middle to top. Okay. Now, what about top to middle? Top to middle. So we're just reversing it. Top to middle, same muscles. So gravity's trying to do the same thing. However, the motion is different. So my right transverse trunk rotators are still working as an agonist, but now I'm observing left transverse trunk rotation as I bring my legs down to my right. Eccentric muscle contraction. <clears throat> the right transverse trunk rotators are going to allow that left transverse trunk rotation through eccentrics. The agonist is my positive. The motion in this case would be in the opposite direction of that pole. And that's why they refer to it as a negative. Okay. Let's flip the legs over to the other side. So gravity is kind of neutral in the middle, right? But if I tip this way, gravity is trying to do this. If I tip that way, gravity is trying to do that. So gravity is actually trying to make you do two different things on two different sides of the teeter-totter. So when your legs are to your left, 
like the bottom picture, legs to the left. Gravity is trying to twist the pelvis to the left. So therefore, gravity is trying to twist the trunk to the right. Gravity is trying to cause right transverse trunk rotation. So if gravity is trying to twist your trunk to the right, you need muscles that are trying to twist your trunk to the left. So you have these left transverse trunk rotators on the bottom. Who are the left transverse trunk rotation pullers? Right external, left internal, and the left directors. Probably on the test, I would ask isometrics, or if I did ask a like this, it would it would uh you know be just one question because it's you know that's not easy. Um, but I hope you guys understand. Let's go to an easy one. What muscles the lateral trunk stretch? Um, what muscles would you be stretching in these two positions? So I'm looking at it and I'm saying, okay, top left, he's bent to the right laterally. So he'd be stretching left lateral trunk benders, right? Those would be <clears throat> lengthened. So who are the left lateral trunk benders? Everything on the left side of the belly button, left rectus, left external, left internal, left erector. <clears throat> right side, he's bent to the left. So we're stretching the ones that are trying to bend you to the right. Everything on the right side of the belly button. Okay. Let's see. All right. Let's do this one. I'm looking at it the same time as you. Dumbbell is trying to bend him to his left. So therefore, I need muscles that are trying to bend me to the right. I need right lateral trunk benders in this exercise. Who are those muscles? Everything on the right side of the belly button, right rectus, right external, right internal, right erector. So I established what my agonist is. Those are the muscles working to do a job above rest. For contraction, I just got to line them up with the motions. So if right lateral benders are working, concentric is going to be when I see right lateral bending. Right lateral benders do right lateral bending only when they're working concentrically. Right lateral benders will do left lateral bending eccentrically and right lateral benders will prevent gravity in this case from bending me to the left isometrically. Okay, so looking at that picture Left to right would be eccentric. The right lateral trunk benders will allow left lateral trunk bending through the context of eccentric contraction. The muscles being lengthened while it's still trying to shorten in a specific direction of pull. From right to left is going to be concentric. Right to left is going to be concentric. The right lateral trunk benders are going to make right lateral trunk bending happen through concentric contraction. And then if you wanted to, I mean, for these pictures, he's obviously holding the position. So holding that position would be right lateral still working isometrically to maintain that position. This position that he's maintaining is more anatomical, and this position that he was maintaining would be more left laterally bent, but it would still be the muscles on the right. Any questions about that one? Okay. Next one. Top. What muscles of the trunk would I be stretching? in the transverse plane of the trunk. So which of the rotation pullers would I be stretching? Give that some thought. <sighs> mm. 
So, as always, in my opinion, I don't go straight to muscles because that's how mistakes are made for me. Maybe you don't make those same mistakes. That's awesome. But I make way too many mistakes. So, um, so what I'm going to do is, I, I see your answer, Olivia. I'm, I'm, I'm showing you that I don't even have it memorized. Like, I have to process it to confirm that one. So let's see. Let's see if you're right. Okay, what's the position of his his pelvis is rotated, but I also know that his sternum is looking at his right hip. So that means his trunk has to be twisted to his right. His trunk has to be twisted to his right. So if his trunk is twisted to his right. That means we have to be stretching muscles that are trying to pull us to the left. So we would be stretching left transverse trunk rotators. Does that make sense why? No problem. Identify the position of the trunk. Is the trunk rotated because he's stretching? No movement. He's just stretching. He's lengthening certain muscles because he's shortening other muscles. If you can see which muscles are shortened or slacked, then we're not stretching those. So his position of his trunk, his trunk is twisted to his right. And I know that because he's looking at his right hip his sternum is looking at his right hip. And the only way that can happen is either you twist your trunk to the right. Hey, right hip, I see you. Or you twist your pelvis to the left. What I just did that you couldn't see with the camera was here's my pelvis. And I did this. So my sternum is still facing my right hip. If my sternum is twisted to my right, if my trunk is twisted to my right, then I'm not stretching muscles that are trying to twist me to the right. I'm actually shortening, slacking those muscles. And I would be stretching muscles that are trying to twist me to the left. If my trunk is twisted to the right, I'm stretching muscles that are trying to twist me to the left. Does that make sense? So he would be stretching left transverse trunk rotators. Who are those muscles? Right external, left internal, left erector spinae. So again, why is this stuff important to learn? Because you may have to stretch a specific muscle in the core. You know, a specific external, a specific internal. And you got to know how these muscles pull so that you know how to position. Cool. Okay. All right, let's skip that one. Okay, how about this one? Top one, isometric. He's just holding this position. Which obliques? would he need let's forget about the erector for now let's just see if you can identify which specific set of obliques and i'm specifically wanting transverse yes gravity is also trying to extend him yes all of his trunk flexors would be engaged however gravity is also trying to twist him because he has a plate held out to the right side so gravity is also trying to rotate his trunk. So I specifically want the trunk muscles that are going to isometrically contract to hold that position to prevent him from twisting anymore. Okay. Gravity is trying to right transverse trunk rotate him. 
So therefore, since gravity is trying to rotate him to the right, he needs muscles that are trying to rotate him to the left. We call those muscles left transverse trunk rotators. Who are your left transverse trunk rotators that are obliques, right external, and left internal? So you would need right external and left internal obliques to hold that position in his trunk's transverse plane. Cool. If he brings the plate up, same muscles, just concentric contraction. If he brings the plate up and he lowers the plate down in the same quadrant, like in that same window of gravity, trying to twist him to the right, same muscles. The only time the muscles would switch is if he comes up and then goes down the other side. Because if he goes down to his left, when well now gravity is trying to rotate him to the left. So therefore, I would need muscles that are trying to rotate me to the right. So in this quadrant, I need left transverse trunk rotation pullers. And in this quadrant, I need right transverse trunk rotation pullers. So a full range of motion would actually engage different agonists once I go past the teeter-totter point. Here, gravity is trying to do wee. Here, gravity is trying to. So here, I need muscles that are pulling this way. And there, I need muscles that are pulling that way. That makes sense? Yes, um, the erector spinae as well. But it might have been buffering, and you may not have heard it, and that's not your fault. We were just talking about which obliques, just to try to simplify it. Um, because on the on the test, I might say, "Hey, just tell, just talk to me about obliques," or I might say, "Which oblique, which with an erect spinae." But yep, all the muscles that pull that way are going to contribute. All right, you guys. The last one is the bottom machine. Okay, and they have this one at at the rec center at, at Bouchard, so you could always go in there and test it out. Guys, let's look for clues, clues in the equipment. I know that his start position in the exercise on the bottom is the picture on the right. I know that's his start position because all of the plates are touching. So I know that he had to get into that position with the plates touching. Does that make sense? So when he moves, the plates are going to separate. Okay. So what I'm going to do, and what I'm trying to teach you guys to do is say, what's his start position? His position is on the machine. This is where your upper extremity stay fixed and you rotate your pelvis. But that's still trunk motion because your upper extremity is fixed. His trunk is rotated to his left. And how I know that is his sternum is forward, but his pelvis is looking to his right. What happen is to have left transverse trunk rotation. His trunk starts off rotated to his left. I also know that that machine isn't trying to make him do anything in that start position. But once he starts to move, that machine is trying to bring him back to where he started. So... This machine throughout his range of motion going from the right picture to the left picture is trying to twist his pelvis to the right. Thus, it's trying to twist his trunk to the left. The exercise is trying to twist his trunk to his left. So if that's the case, we don't need muscles that are trying to twist his trunk to the left. We need muscles that are trying to twist his trunk to the right. We need right transverse trunk rotators in this exercise. Who are those? Left external, right internal, right erector spinae. Does that make sense? Identify the agonist because you identify why we need them. And then once you identify that agonist, then the circles help us to remember those major muscles that pull in those specific directions.
Yeah. Cool. All right, guys, I hope this was helpful. Go ahead. The ones we didn't do, give them a go. Maybe this will help you. And we'll do those first thing on Monday. Uh, but you got to do me a favor. Uh, try to read ahead, watch ahead on the, I'm going to post some lectures on the ankle. We just can't fall too behind. Um, so we just, uh, the end of the semester will be here before we know it. So I hope that was helpful. I hope the buffering wasn't too bad. And uh, I will see you guys on Monday. Bye-bye.